Hello everybody, the Lord Root, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Shareware. So this game that we're about to play today actually has a rather interesting reputation. In fact, um, it's been erroneously referred to as the mother of all shareware games, but in reality it's not. I mean, Cries came out a year before in 1987. Still, it's a very nice game that kind of shows that shareware, even at this time, was not crap. I mean, a, a lot of people, you know, might think of it as shovelware to some degree, but um, it's actually, this is actually a rather nice game. I forget exactly how big it is, but it is fairly big. So we're just going to set up the keys real quick. We'll go uh, left, right, jump with control, Fireball with space, open door with up, and teleport, which I don't quite know how to use. We're going to uh, set that as a um, as our keyboard layout. That'll give us kind of a Commander Keen kind of feel. So, this is an EGA game. And of course, this was in 1988 before the Sound Blaster really took off. I'm not entirely sure what the, um, when the Sound Blaster came out, I know it came out in the early 90s, maybe late 80s, but, um, there's, of course, this is kind of like, you know, a Zelda where they show you all the items you can get. Incidentally, those shy birds are not nearly shy at all. They're rather, um, difficult to work with. They're they seem to be uh, heat-seeking, and of course, we get attacked by birds as soon as we get out. Now, it's really been a long time for me since I've played this game. This is uh, an old, old game, but you can see it's actually rather visually stunning. There's a lot of, um, I suppose, I wouldn't call it immersion in this game, but it's, um, you know, it is, um, the map is actually designed fairly well in this case, in the sense that, you know, you don't, you have a lot of, um, detail in the map that you probably would not have expected to see out of a tile-based game here. Especially during this era, and especially on the PC, which at the time was not known for gaming. Just going to jump over these trees real quick. And we're going to um, get our whoa, massive bird attack and... That was probably my fault. I mean, the controls, believe it or not, are fairly responsive. I mean, the game does look sluggish, but this is something that, um, I mean, the controls are reasonable, believe it or not. I mean, it's, um, uh, I was surprised by how good the controls were when I came back and tested this out. Because you would expect some amount of input lag. Now, I don't quite know what these are here. I do know if I'm not careful these guys will kill me. There's a, a bottomless pit here that I want to avoid. But yeah, the detail on this game is actually rather staggering. There we go. So, we got a flock of these birds here. I don't know why they call those guys shy birds, because they're not really that shy at all. Let's, it looks like this gives us two shots. And... I am probably going to die pretty soon, if I'm not careful. 
that this game is actually, in my opinion, fairly well polished. Especially for a, um, you know, a game, you know, that you could download from a BBS back in the 80s. It's, and this is version 5, by the way. Whoa. I need to beware of those things. I guess I'm on a bunch of telephone poles or something, or maybe a ship. I'm not entirely sure. However, I'm fairly certain that that fireball is going to be a bit of a problem. Or maybe not, I can shoot it. I believe... I get the impression that enemies spawn randomly. Maybe if I go up here... I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that. I gotta be able to, because that looks like the only way to go. I didn't previously know about that, it just seemed like the most logical choice. I'll take that fireball, looks like a rocket ship of some kind. There. So, um, yeah, this is actually a rather nice a game for my 99th video because my 100th I've decided is going to be Kerbal Space Program. So this is um, a nice segue into that. And um, really as long as we can avoid these asteroids, uh, you know, I'm hesitant to take that leap of faith. I must need uh, something to to teleport. Did you know, by the way, that there are cacti on the moon? I didn't. That's um, a rather amazing fact about the moon that nobody knows. It looks like uh, we'll want to go over here. Okay, so... We have to go all the way back, it looks like. I don't have what is necessary in order to get over there. My guess is I need to teleport, but since I haven't really read the documentation, we'll go this way because it's a bit easier. Whoa. It's, um, I haven't read the documentation, um, for whatever reason I was about to say. That probably because I didn't think to look for it. But we'll just come up. Whoa, that was almost death. This is not ending well for me, is it? And that's probably game over. Or maybe not. This is one of those games where I guess you can get, you can have zero lives. I was gonna do Pickle Wars here, but I went to the website to download Pickle Wars, the vendor's website. Not, I mean, believe it or not, people are actually still selling these games. And the version they had was a 16-bit Windows binary, which does not mesh well with Windows 64, although it would probably work with Wine. But needless to say, um, that is not going to do for DOSBox. I need to... Damn. 
Uh, let's see, thy lord roots. Let's try this. Oh, wow. Yeah, just... Let's try to, um, get back. Let's try this again. We have roughly an idea of where to go. I think we'll grab our key, because I believe the key is needed for all doors. Although I'm not entirely sure of that. But yeah, I mean, the, the artwork on this is not bad. Not bad at all for um, a, a game of this era and with this limited of a color palette. Now, I believe the, the Commodore 64 had a limited, uh, the same number of colors in the palette, but the trouble with using the Commodore 64 as a reference point is that, you know what, maybe I better go back and grab that shield. The trouble with using the Commodore 64 as a reference is that there were some awesome artists for the C64, and at the time, the, the IBM PC was not the, um the major brand of PC, um, you know, for, maybe for here in the U.S., I mean, I, I want to say at this time that the Apple II was actually much more prevalent in homes, and IBM didn't really set out with, um, their, uh, their PC as a, um, as a gaming machine, it was, you know, Big Blue's business uh, machine. And so as a result, like, in terms of, you know, things like the amount of memory it had, I mean, it was not bad at all, but the, um, the video was lacking because it wasn't intended for games. It really wasn't until uh, companies like Compaq came along that, um, you know, they ended up, you know, well, IBM at that point had not, whoa, I'm being chased by a bird and a bee in sentient beach balls. I'm not quite sure how to deal with that bee except to avoid it. I don't think it's possible, however, for me to avoid that. There's another deal here, too, like, um, on these, um, on these platforming sequences. It really, uh, doesn't help to have a fixed jump height. That really does mess with you. I think what I did here was I walked off to this platform. And... Yeah, that's... That's getting rather... Rather difficult. The... The trouble with this game, it would at least appear, is that I don't know if the enemies are random. Oh, you do have a, a limited jump height. But they are... Oh no, it's the bee. The bee we all love to hate. I'm just going to take damage from that. I mean, it's not the most intuitive game. And 
it appears to to throw you curveballs all the time. I don't know exactly whether or not these guys are like yeah, that's that was meant to be a trap. So this guy we need to avoid. Looks like I've got students email on me. I'll wait on that. But, um. Okay, well, that's interesting. I'm rather. Um. I don't really know here what it is that. Well, first of all, I don't even know how to use the, the teleport. But, um... Yeah, we'll, um... We'll give this a rest for a bit, and I will return with another game. Okay, we are back, and I did actually figure out, you know the deal with, you know, the game. It turns out that the game that you can download from the website is a Windows 32 executable, or at least I believe so. There's another one on DOS Archives that is a weird 16-bit, you know, executable. But this has uh, in it music by Bobby Prince, and uh, this is Karen Crowther. She made a couple of other edutainment games, like, um, well, one of them, I believe, was Math Rescue, and there's another one called World, uh, Word Rescue, rather. And um, if you grew up in the 90s, then, you know, if your school had a PC, you might have played it. But, um, the, um, the game so far has been a little bit, the, the UI is a little bit sluggish. You can, um, oh yeah, and the big deal with this is that you, um, use a salad shooter. I guess it's, uh, you know, I guess this was a game that was licensed by the salad shooter company or whatever, whoever made it. Younger people will probably have no idea what I'm talking about. A, a salad shooter is this thing that slices the, um, like cucumbers and stuff to make salads. And of course, in this case, evil pickle-shaped aliens, or maybe they aren't just pickle-shaped, maybe they are... Oh wow, this dude pickled his brother, I guess they really are pickles. They're... The guy reminds me of the Vogons from, um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, anyway, we need to grab salad shooters for some reason. And, of course, this is the, um... This is the folly of pacifism when you get attacked by a giant pickle people. Uh, you end up, you know, setting yourself up. We're going to go easy for now, and we'll play. I'm just going to jump right in. Now, Bobby Prince, as it would turn out, is um, the guy that did the music for Commander Keen. But 
I have no idea what's up with these guys. We gotta... I mean, I don't know. It, it's really weird, though. Am I being a... Okay, well, I was, uh... Okay, I don't understand that. Why would you make it to... I guess it's a challenge of some kind. Ouch. And... I don't know what's happened here. But I'm almost style of solid shooter ammo. I have no idea what is to be done about that. Maybe I have to... Okay. You know, if you keep on standing there like that, the pickles are gonna get you. This is... Oh, I guess I have to press center. And I still have no idea what I'm doing. Um... Control or up. Let's see what else we have. In our open door flip switch, activate warp. Okay, there we go. Now I've foolishly trapped myself down here. Maybe I have no health because, um, yeah, I think I have no health because this is easy mode. Let's... Is there no way to go back? I hope she's since become a better programmer. Oh wait, my carrots are my health. I mean, she's a good programmer, don't get me wrong, but she's... She shouldn't be pulling the, um, the game port, um, so frequently that... Um, not having a joystick will cause problems. Oh, excellent. There's more solid shooter ammo here. Let's see. Spherical blocks can be crumbled if vegetables hit them. So... I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the gameplay is fairly smooth for the most part, but... It's a warp. The default controls are a little off. Okay, I must collect all the salad shooters. The vitally important salad shooters that we must be careful not to um, lose. Oops. 
well, it's the wrong button, it looks like. I'm not entirely sure why carrots... I mean, I understand carrots are supposed to be good for you, but... Let's see what happens here. Well, that's no way. Or just grab these um these salad shooters here. I'm assuming the burgers are not. Oh, safe for human consumption. Or rather, they are, but they're they're neutral, I guess. Now there is a warp down here. I suppose if I were doing a tool-assisted run of this, well, the first question would be, what would happen if? I ended up, you know, trapping myself down here. Cause... There's no obvious way up, I mean, the... This may or may not have frustrated me as a kid, I can't rightly remember. Because the... I mean, the only thing I know is that the, um, in hindsight, I wouldn't blame myself for being frustrated with the game, just because there's some fairly unintuitive stuff here. Even though... Bobby Prince's music does make up for it, I will freely admit that. Now, how am I supposed to avoid that? There are some gameplay deficiencies in here. It's sort of the situation to where good graphics don't make a game. I really have no idea what I'm doing here besides... Um... you know, get myself killed. I mean, the big moral of the story, I would think, from a gameplay design is don't, um, I guess don't make the game annoying to play, because it's kind of what's been done here. I mean, you know, the... The issue with the salad shooter aside, and there's... Oh no, that, that could be skipped. I mean, this is like her, her third game, though. She should know better. Might as well get that salad shooter there. Let's try 
probably this should go in. At any rate, what's done is dying. And now the question is, how do I evade some of these robotic enemies that don't... Um... That's right, I need a key for that. It would be nice if... Maybe I should observe... These, uh, these guys a little bit more carefully, but... I mean, it, they may pop out. There may be a way to, to kill them, but it seems like the vast majority of enemies you can't kill in this game. Maybe somebody who is more versed with Pickle Wars, let's say Pickle Wars expert, could give me an idea on that. But, um, we'll go down here and try to get some of these salad shooters down here. That's a mighty inconvenient place for that robot. Especially one that you can't kill. Oh wait, there's a key up there, isn't there, that I totally forgot about. Well, I mean, at least I have, you know, Salad for my salad shooter. And I'm hoping that I fear somewhat in vain that the sky has gone away. Let's try this again. Let's hope that the robot does not catch up with me while I wait on this platform. There we go. That is BS. Easy mode should not be such a a pain to deal with. And the reason I say that is because those enemies they're they're not placed in a way that really makes you want to play the game much. Considering that they are okay, so th those guys are capable of being shot. What about? Maybe the problem is that these guys just never get in the proper line of sight. I don't know if they're immortal or if they're just too much of a pain to, to 
still was. But I'm going to get out of the way of this guy because he really is annoying me. And besides, I need, um, I need salad for my salad shooter. I'm not going to waste this salad shooter on him. I'd hate to think of what hard mode is like. I mean, this might actually make for a good tool assisted speed run. Assuming that you know what you're doing. Which most TASers do. Right. Yeah, I don't... So those guys are not affected whatsoever by salad. Which is real smooth because I have a habit of being in the most annoying places. And I feel that this game, the way it's playing its music, is making fun of me. Alright, do you mind not telling me information I already know? Oops. That would be greatly appreciated, particularly since, um... You know, you're already doing a good job of pissing me off. Oh, uh, let's see. We need to go up here because I believe there is a salad shooter up here. But yeah, this is the sort of art style at least is very characteristic of this person. The one who will um, program the game. It's very similar to the sort of style used to Math Blaster. Or not Math Blaster. Math Blaster is a completely different game. That, I believe... Oh, I found all the salad shooters I can leave. If I'll survive. It only took us some 20 odd minutes to get past the first level. Imagine that. At least we kept our salad and refilled our health. Okay, is there a reason to do that? I'm assuming that this must control because I can't go down anymore. Well, we've got 32 po 64 possibilities and a um tall glitch Well that's 
That's kind of a weird way of going about it. So... So they give us page up here and then they don't really give us any way to... Oh, that is a feisty little devil, ain't it? They don't really give us a way to um, get around that. And I was able to get around that guy because I'm a pro. Well, that was real lucky. I don't know why, um, why it is that I did things this way. I guess, I guess I'm supposed to turn everything on. There's no real rhyme or reason to this, it's... Oh, right. Ah! I will manage to find a way to get through these platforms. Okay, that was... So I can look down below me, but I can't look up. Now, something tells me that okay, that's nice. But knowing this, it does not really help me much, because... The, um... Aliens are afraid of vegetables. Flavor text is admittedly interesting, but I don't really think that there doesn't really seem to be much of a reason aside from, you know, plot to pick those up. Okay, so that one triggers the sky over here. We know this much already. I guess maybe I shouldn't 
give Karen Crowther much grief. You know, just because it was a lot more difficult when this was written to um, to write games. Maybe that is blocking somehow. But that switch is blocking the thingamabob. But the deal is, though, is like being told you can look up and then not being able to do so. You know, only to, to really find out that the game's state is impeded by, oh, um, by some weird deficiency to where, like, you really, I mean, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't complain too much, but it, I just don't, I don't think the, um, I, I don't think the game was done very well. Because, uh, well, it seems to me that, I mean, the graphics are nice, and the music isn't too terribly bad in my opinion either, but it's just that the gameplay mechanics... I mean, this game isn't quite what I remember it to be, which really isn't a bad thing, but let's turn the sky on. I mean, it seems to me that you've got a lot of waiting around to do. And there's that weird deal again with, um, you know, the programmer, you know, constantly pulling the, um, constantly pulling the serial port, or not the serial port, but the game port. Now that's real crazy though. I mean there's really no way I can think of to uh to get this guy up to where he needs to be. Maybe we'll figure this one out. I mean, it's... There's obviously something up here that we need to get. But it's, um... I don't know if I'm a big fan of the trial and error approach or not. The only thing I can say is maybe if I turn that off, maybe 
maybe I can expect some help from that. Doubtful, but... It's worth trying. If one of these platforms starts moving... Oh, hey. There we go. But yeah, I should not have been expected to to get one out of 64 attempts on that. That's ludicrous, to say the least. And so is that. I guess I have to go down here and... Avoid that. Okay, well at least they, they made it to where I didn't have to do too much, but it's... Let's try some of these buttons on the left and see if they correspond to anything. Okay, so there is that guy there. I've just got to find the key. Let's see if they drop any more in the way of Mel. So those platforms just kind of appear. Oh. Thanks for coming out of nowhere. Oh, those dudes. And of course they would put the the one the one enemy of the is near impossible to counter. I guess it's not near impossible, but There are a lot of gameplay issues that make this one in particular, um, this game in particular, pretty, um, it's just like the, the opportunistic placement of enemies is something that bothers me. There. They're placed in such a way that it's... First of all, it's not entirely obvious that you can kill most of them. Aside from the pickles. I mean, the pickles, sure. But... Other than that, the, uh, the other ones are not so easy to spot. And you know they're there. But what you don't know is, oh, that's a weird bug. Let me try that again. That's the magical farting machine right there. Uh, well, thanks for misleading me. Now, I don't, I don't mind that there's, that I'm being misled as such. Because, I mean, Mega Man misleads you all the time. 
It's just that they sort of go out of their way, it almost seems, or it, maybe through lack of proper level design. It seems like the, um, it, it does not seem like, um, this game is designed to deal with certain cases that would make, um, well, it would make finishing the level in some cases, um, impossible. Which, I don't know if I agree with, I think. If you're going to do that, you at least need a way to, to kill yourself. Because it's, um, it's very annoying when, you know, you get stuck somewhere and there's no way to even... Like, the only way you can get out of it is by restarting the entire game. Well, suppose this lady probably does not believe in suicide, which is fine, but you do need a suicide button in that case. Oh, there we go. Well, it took me long enough to, um, to figure that one out. I don't know why. I knew that that had to be somewhere. But let's finish this level and see what the next um the next one is like if the game doesn't hang. Well, that's interesting. We get a cutscene here on level two. There's, um, the weird goblin engineer. Are they aliens or are they pickles? I don't really understand. See, I always thought they were pickles when I was growing up. Oh, that should have hit that dude. No, it's so. Um, I always thought they were pickles, but maybe they're. They're pickle shaped aliens. Or maybe they're sentient pickles. I don't know. It's so. Uh... I mean, that's a call I'm not prepared to make. Okay, we need, um. The blue key, it looks like. Am I gonna get you get punished for that? Like, you lose health, I think. This is all out war and you're concerned about the um, functioning of your mail machines. I mean, the only thing I can figure is that maybe hitting the mail machines is sedition, maybe. And that by 
Hitting the Mel Machines, maybe you're committing an open act of treason. And there goes the guy I cannot. Oh, well, I got him. It's just the AI is on that is so fidgety you can't hit it. Well, yeah, like I was saying, um, maybe it just happens to be the case that the, um, you know, by shooting the Mel Machines that you're committing an act of rebellion or whatever. Which, you know, it makes me wonder if, if these guys are able to send mail machines out to the place where weapons are supposedly hidden that everybody knows is a salad shooter, then what exactly... Why am I the one to collect the salad shooters, and why is... I mean, this peace-loving planet can't really be said to be at arms, then. I mean... I have no problem with the fact that there's a peace-loving planet. In fact, I admire it, but... You know, they know that the salad shooters are weapons. I mean, and I'm thinking in this universe, at least, there is a, um... My guess is that in this universe, there's... a deal going on to where... every home... Courtesy of Courtesy of the Salad Shooter Company or whatever it's called has a salad shooter in their home. Cause it's the only real logical thing in a universe where salad shooters are so frequent that every home, big or small, has a salad shooter. So, why are they sending me out on this quest to find it? And I bet you there is a, a guy up there, maybe. And they're also in a weird sort of deal to where... They really don't know, despite the fact that they acknowledge that vegetables are the bane of the enemy. It doesn't really seem to occur to them that when I grab a pickle, for instance, that shouldn't give me points because... Or maybe that's a cucumber there. It should give me ammo. I mean, it should give me points, I guess, but... It should also give me ammo. Same deal when I eat the carrots. Even though, I guess, in this world, carrots are so precious that it would just never occur to you to, uh, to load your salad shooter up with it and shoot people with it. And even so, like, what kind of punishment is that to take the vegetables? And, um, you know, if the vegetables, the carrots in particular, are keeping the, um, the people alive, 
then how is it remotely ethical to punish people who shoot mailboxes by taking their carrots? I mean, if you, if you ask me, the crime does not fit the punishment in this case. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get done with this level, I think, and then I'm going to, um, probably stop it here. It's getting a little bit long, and I'm beginning to ramble. Although I think, I think given the political ramifications of this utopia, I'm presently, oh there we go, I'm presently entitled to it. But we'll go through the store. And, um, I don't know, we might... Oh, well, there's, a uh, Easter Egg in the background I didn't notice before. Let's see if there's a cutscene. Sure isn't, but we'll go ahead and we'll quit here. Anyway, this has been Thy Lord Root. I will see you later.